that same book that I've been reading moved from suffering into worship. And, uh, and it was just a, it's an intriguing book uh, to weave these all together, it's dealing with the book of Revelation. Anyway, I was reading a, a, about the purpose of worship in this book from this author's point of view. And in Revelation chapter 4, we see God in, uh, on his throne in front of a sea of glass, surrounded by angels, four mysterious creatures, and 24 elders. The author writes, these elders have crowns, crowns that represent positions of authority and a life well lived. But when God gets praised, the crowns come off and are laid before the throne because he alone is worthy of recognition. So one of the things worship does for us is to put recognition in its proper place. If we are to receive a crown in heaven, it will serve only as an object of worship to God. All my accomplishments are stored up, stored up for one grand moment when I can lay them down at the throne. The author continues, here is my confession. I, my crown is huge. I multiply my efforts to make it so, but not for self-aggrandizement. It is the desire of my life to get to heaven, bow before God, lay down a great big crown, so that all heaven will come to his feet and say, now that's a gift worthy of a king. A life well lived is perhaps the greatest value for the worship of God. Now each week we have a chance to practice laying our crowns at the feet of our God by giving an offering. So as the offering plate goes by, don't just think about supporting the church and the missions of, uh, mission of the church. Instead, imagine laying that offering at the feet of God with his eyes on you, with the angels and the 24 elders watching. It will very likely make you wish that you were giving more, but all God expects from us is faithfulness. Let's pray. Father, as we lay at your feet what we have to offer, we pray that you will take it and multiply it and use it to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.